Hello again, I am Blunty. This is me recording an intro after I recorded the outro for this very video because I feel like we should bookend it a little bit. So today, uh, this is an edited version of a live stream, which I'm currently still performing, but if you're watching on YouTube, it's a pre-recorded edited version of that live stream. That makes some amount of sense, I'm sure. We're going to be looking at this thing right here. You see in the little side window up there? That is a uh, PC I just built today to test out Steam OS, the exact same version of Steam OS that's on the Steam Deck, not the Steam OS you can download separately. That's a different thing, running a different version of Linux. That one's Debian-based. There's one on SteamOS, is Arch-based. There is a difference. If you're a Linux nerd, you can explain it in the comments, I'm sure. The point is, the version running on this machine right now, that I just spent the last few hours setting up, is exactly the same SteamOS that's on the Steam Deck. The hardware, not so much. But it will let me, moving forward, have a little rig that I can play with Linux stuff on. Uh, the reasoning behind that, I'll probably edit in from the stuff I did in the intro of the original live stream, but um, enjoy. Smooth enough, right, chat? That'll work. <laughs> so yeah, we're doing a PC build because the PC we're building today, I'm putting in, or I'm going to load it up with something called Hollow iOS, or um, Hollow ISO, I should say, not iOS. And Hollow is a Linux distribution that is built right on top, or or using as a core, the actual SteamOS reinstall image for reinstalling onto a Steam Deck. Not the Steam OS 3.0 that you can download, which is the old, old, old version they had from years, years back when they were doing Steam Boxes. That Steam OS is built on Debian. The Steam Deck version is built on Arch Linux, uh, which is a much more rapidly updated uh, Linux distribution. So, and what Hollow have done is taken the restore image from Steam Deck and built it so it can be installed on regular PC hardware. I've been keeping my eye on it for a little while now, and it was just not quite ready yet, but as of an update in late December, it's at version 4.0 now, and it seems like they're not done fiddling with it yet, but it seems like it's ready to give a, a test drive to see how... Uh, uh, to give me a platform for Linux gaming that represents a compatibility equivalent of a Steam Deck based on intuition and a bit of napkin math, I guess. Um, games should perform about the same on this machine we're using this as they do on a Steam Deck-ish. I'm not looking to build an identical system to the Steam Deck. What I want is something close-ish. Um, it's more for taking a look at the state of Linux gaming rather than doing a Steam Deck equivalent. Um, because you know I haven't I haven't done a a proper look at Linux gaming in about two years I think when we last built the Linux gaming machine on on stream and for that I used Pop OS but because the Steam Deck has been around for a little while now a lot has changed in Proton a lot has changed in how developers approach compatibility with Linux so I feel like now is the time now that the Steam Deck has has, has snowballed a bit now is a good time to dive back into Linux gaming and see what's what so. There we go, that's, that's the plan. The promising start, it lit up. Okay, reboot, select proper boot device, or insert boot media, and select it and press the key. Boop. Boop. All right, we might have to reboot. Huh, not detecting the boot device. Which means I'm gonna have to go into the BIOS and make sure we're set to boot from USB by the seams of things. I thought I'd left this machine ready for that. Oh, there we go. The mouse is set way too sensitive. Let's go back to regular sensitivity. There we go. All right. Um, so we should be running directly off the USB at this point. I was expecting a install interface. On screen keyboard, install. Here we go. Install Steam on this. I assume the rest of that is PC. Installation type. Install Hollow ISO version snapshot, yada, 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 or exit install. Well, that's an easy choice. All right. That didn't take long at all, did it? You may reboot now or type arch crude mint to make further changes. Gaming on Windows still always be the best. Yeah, I mean, it is the monopoly default. But the interesting thing about what the Steam Deck is doing is because it's been so popular and so well received, a lot of developers are now deliberately making sure their shit runs on Linux. 
why won't you roll through the boot options properly? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Looky, looky! That was encouraging. The screen is blank, but I've still got video output, according to the monitor's little light. So this is deliberate blank, not the machine is dead blank. <laughs> I'm assuming he's just doing some first boot background stuff. All right, I'm just gonna uh, check my Twitter feed while we wait, I guess. Wish I had a hard drive activity light in this machine. Do -do. Do -do -do -do. How long do we wait before we do a manual reboot? Oh, there we go. Oh, I've got no keyboard control here. Uh, there we go. What are you tangled up in? Controller cables. They're like headphones. They just tangle themselves when you're not looking directly at them. I suddenly realize this is a Steam OS install, so I'm probably going to need a controller for the setup. Uh, nope. Shit. Next thing turns out you need a PS2 keyboard. <laughs> yeah, well, the light's not on this controller. There we go. Hey. Yeah, didn't like the USB 3.0 port, apparently. Yeah, just wanted the USB 2.0 port. We must be very low level system here. Before you start playing, let's take a quick tour of the device. Press any key, tap the screen to continue. Okay, okay, this is all irrelevant because the controls aren't where they should be. And sure enough, there's my Steam account. You know what I'm noticing? We don't have any audio, do we? Where do we get to the audio output device here? Um, audio, there we go. Output device. Navi 10, that would be the one I want. Did I hear a bing? Hey. Oh, right, my, my actual keyboard's working now, too. No more on-screen keyboard for me. Good. Okay, so after install, we have 1.7 terabytes free, which is quite a lot of games. That's yeah, three, three hours. This took three hours. That can't be right. I should have taken an hour to build. But the, the build got in its own way a little bit, and we had all those Linux issues. But we're up and running now. That's all that matters. All right, looks like we're ready. Let's see if we get a game running first try. Oh, uh, let's see if I can sync my save. I don't want my save on this machine to fuck up my save on my PC machine, for example. There we go, it worked that time. All right, 230 hours on PC already. That's a lot of hours. Pales in comparison to the 1500 on Switch. But still. Alright, so we are processing the shaders for Vulcan. Which is a... That's interesting. It installed DirectX, but then... Pre-processed the Vulcan shaders. I love how it has to animate the controller. Oh, you know, you have to wiggle the sticks and press the buttons. Yeah, okay. No, no one buying a Steam Deck is unfamiliar with how controllers work. <laughs> you don't need that animation. Usually at this point, there's some indication up top of the screen that it's pre-caching shaders, but it did that before launch, so I'm not sure why this is taking extra long. Maybe it's doing the DirectX ones now or something. Oh, there it goes. Told you. Just did a second for that to appear, that's all. Alright. Alright. Promising. Good. Yes. That's not quite 60. Wait, does Steam Deck have a frame counter I can bring up? Like a native one? Um, let's try the old Shift Tab. No, Shift Tab doesn't bring up the Steam overlay like it does on PC. Oh, uh, it has defaulted to the wrong button layout. It does, but the deck has a special button for it. Right. Oh! That's interesting. It doesn't have all the control types. It won't let me. It won't let me bring up the buttons for a PlayStation controller or a Switch controller. Usually, there's five controller types here. Type one and type two are uh, current Xbox and previous generation Xbox layouts. Three and four are the two generational play, uh, PlayStation ones, and five is supposed to be the Switch buttons. 
That's an interesting little quirk. All right, we can just change that around like that to make the interface work the way I expect it to. So there is that. Yeah, all the control I can't play like this. All my controls are fucked up. I have to manually reassign everything if I'm going to play this way. I can't even... I can't even use my Dango ticket with muscle memory. Like, it's... It knows I'm using a Switch controller, but the game won't let me choose the Switch layout. That one should reverse the buttons for me. That's the one I used before I started using a proper Switch controller to play this game on PC. There we go. So, all the buttons on the interface, on the UI, are still going to be Xbox, but I don't need those because my muscle memory <laughs> knows how to play this game. It was just the closest wired controller I had at hand when I needed one for the setup, because SteamOS's install procedure relies on you having a keyboard input, apparently. It wouldn't respond to the mouse or keyboard for, like, setting your region or, you know, typing in your account or anything. Which makes sense. But yeah, I needed to grab a controller, so I just grabbed this one, which is a cutesy little basic bitch power a third-party controller. It's light and a bit flimsy, but it's quite a good controller, all things considered. All right, how about a frame counter? Restore down those settings, maybe. And display. No. A control and two. Alright. Control two. No. How about Alt two? No. Hmm. Press the button under performance section. Where's the performance section? System security, internet notification, display, audio, Bluetooth, controller, keyboard, friends, downloads, cloud, family. I don't see a performance. I control too, but not while in the game. I mean. Oh, that worked. Alright. Uh, there we go. Um, it's very, very small though. That'll do for now. I can see it. You guys might not be able to see it very well, but at least I can see it. I can tell you. Small because it was made for 1280 by 100. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I need to figure out how to change the native underlying resolution. Because the game is obviously not running at 4K. Because the game wouldn't run that well at 4K on this hardware. Plus, I can see it. <laughs> I can see the pixels. Which is not something I can do when it's running at 4K. But yeah, the, uh, the overlay and interface and everything underneath it is still running at 4K. Which is a little bit small. Because of the uh, art design of this game, it doesn't actually look too bad. So I've never run it at 720 since the demo, I don't think, when I was testing basic performance shit. It actually doesn't look so bad for 720. Let's have it at uh, 1080, though, if we can. Oh, well, that's very interesting. It doesn't give me a 1080 preference. Right, so it doesn't give me all my control options. It doesn't let me go to 1080. <laughs> I wonder why it would be doing that. I mean, obviously you can hook up the deck to external displays and go above 720. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there'd be a way to fiddle with the settings somewhere that'll unlock proper resolution selection, but all right. Um, yep, we're now to 60. Easy peasy. Frame times are good. 16 milliseconds, pretty solid. Yeah, I'm getting rock solid frame times here. All right, let's aggravate. But at the very least, I wanted to moderately exceed the Steam Deck performance. But again, I wasn't really targeting that. I just wanted to be somewhere in the ballpark. Of course, this machine also represents a fairly average gaming rig as well for a sort of 1080p player. Oh yeah, this is the RX 5600 XT. So. A pretty decent 1080p card. Uh, a little bit above sort of the 1050, 1050Ti-ish level performance uh, that the Steam Deck is vaguely equivalent to. Uh, 6500XT? No, <laughs> I don't have any 6000 series cards. Otherwise I would have, because they're RDNA 2, whereas this is RDNA 1. Right. And, oh, that's... Oh, I've got, I forgot. That's why the title screen didn't look 60, because it's not. I forgot. 
on PC, all of these uh, pre-rendered things and cutscenes are locked to 30 anyway. <laughs> so I was right. I guess I, my guess was a bit higher. I guess I was a bit more generous. But yeah, this is 30 because these scenes are locked for some reason. Um, all right, graphics settings, settings menu. Let's have a look here. Let's go dynamic shadows on. Thank you. Um, don't need any model swapping apparently. We'll go high on the level of detail. Well, that's the thing. They're not pre-rendered, but they are locked to 30. Because most of the cutscenes, um, or a lot of the cutscenes, happen with you in whatever armor you're wearing. Right? So your character looks like your character, and your equipment looks like your equipment. But then they, they lock the cutscenes to 30. In fact, I can show you. I don't know how well you guys can see the frame counter up there, but it says 30. And as you'll see in a second, these are not pre-rendered. Because there I am in my current gear. <laughs> it's such a weird decision. It's pretty jarring when you're playing at uh, 60 or even 120, which... Uh, but then the cutscene pops in and it's all 30. <laughs> ah, my eyes! My eyes! My precious eyes! All right, let's go on a hunt and see what happens to my performance now that I've turned things back up again. Uh, village quests. The funny thing is, at 720, it actually looks still slightly better than it does on the Switch. Because I'm using anti-aliasing and the Switch doesn't. So even though I'm at 720 as opposed to 1080, which is, what the, well, the Switch actually runs at it closer to 800. It scales it up to 1080. So I guess, yeah, 720 is actually pretty close to what the Switch runs it at, but because I'm running uh, TAA, FXAA, whatever. Um, wait, what combination was it again? Yeah, TAA, FXAA, I was right. Because I'm running both those, the game actually looks still way better than it does on the Switch. <laughs> well, not way better, noticeably better. A little bit cleaner on the edges. But yeah, texture filtering is probably being done a bit better as well. Like, I don't think the Switch does the texture filtering the same way. And the reflections are certainly better on PC as well. The switch reflections are a little bit muddy. I mean, they get the idea across and make, you know, water look like water. But they are very mushy, low-resolution reflections. All right. So, yeah, frame pacing is a little bit wobbly now. I'm seeing 19s. Mostly 16. But there's definitely a little more spiking going on now. Yeah, I'm still sticking pretty close to 16 here. Frame type pacing. Oh! At 59, 61. Yeah. So. GPU is working harder now, probably. The shadows I turned up will be mostly at fault for that. But I've added about 10% load to it. But I'm still only at 44 ish. Perfect rash on your face! Boop -a -doo -boop -a -doo -boop -a -doo -bomp. Yeah, I think I'm pretty okay with this performance level. We're not quite as stable as we were before I turned a few things up, but I barely dove beyond 60, and whatever frame pacing issue there was, was fractional. I mean, I'm sure if I pre-recorded and looked for it, I'd see it, but I don't feel it. Uh, looks like under the Games Properties menu in Steam, you can set the resolution. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Properties. General compatibility updates, local files, language betas, DLC. Alright, it does look like it's in general. Oh, wait, there it is. Games resolution default. Ah, hello. Alright. Set resolution for internal and external display. Alright, then I think we have to know. And you know what? I'm going to set that by default anyway, because that might skip some issues. Just like me with GTA 5 when it came out. Played on 360. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was not a good experience. <laughs> oh, that fucking thing was all over the place. Alright, still locked at 60 pretty much in town here. I'll do the same Rathi Hunt just for consistency's sake. Yeah, my GPU and CPU are still pretty much where they were. Actually, let's uh, double check that the game has... Yep, now we're at 1080 still. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, frame timing is a little bit wibbly again, but no more so than... When we're at 720 with these settings. Mm -hmm. yeah, pretty consistent around here as well. 
say maybe another five to seven percent on top of the GPU load. And that's about it. Alright, we should see a drop somewhere here. A little bit of inconsistency. No, we're solid. You know what? I think we're slightly more consistent at 1080p than we were with these settings at 720p. Might be one of those... Oh, you know what it is. This game is not particularly good at multi-threading. So we might have had a very slight um, bottleneck on the CPU single core performance at 720 that we're now avoiding at 1080. That's why we're seeing a lot more consistency here. <laughs> it's funny how I can keep an eye on GPU, CPU percentage, uh, FPS, frame time, and the frame time graph while fighting Arathian. That's how automatic this fight has become for me. <laughs> yeah, I think we're in a pretty sweet spot here with the hardware. Got a nice reliable 1080p, which is pretty much what I would, I would expect from this. But yeah, I mean, when this game first launched on PC, it wouldn't run on Linux at all because of the... Um, DRM crap, but now it runs perfectly. So that's a promising change already just from that one example. All right, you guys ready for this? You probably can't hear it, but it's very quiet anyway. Man, this is a really sticky one. There's your ASMR. Your system will do a lot better than the Steam Deck. You should. Like, not massively more, but it should outperform it by... Well, I mean, based on Monster Hunter, 15 20%. Although, that said... That said... Let's see what I max out at. Because I have had it locked to 60. I know a lot of Steam Deck users lock their frame rate to 40. Because that's a really nice balancing act for most games. When it comes to performance, battery life, and how it looks, letting you turn up a few extra things versus 60. Frame pacing stability more than anything else, really, I guess. Alright, let's see here. Display. Where is it? Frame rate cap, there it is. Unlimited. Alright, so we're at 70s. So, yeah, I think we're significantly outperforming a native Steam Deck. 80s through here where it's nice and closed in. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm maintaining triple digit frame rates here. I might have not really correctly estimated the kind of difference this hardware is going to make. But still, again, the point was Linux gaming in general and the difference that the existence of the Steam Deck has made to compatibility developers' attitudes, prioritization of Linux compatibility. I think you gave it a bit, a lot more beans than you originally estimated. Yeah, seems so. Yeah, we're between 70 and 100 floating here. And GPU is around 68-70%. CPU is about 36%, which is not unexpected for this game, considering, again, single core performance uh, is a limiting factor. Yeah, I'm more curious than ever to run a few more games. Because, I mean, the performance of a Switch port <laughs> may not be the strongest uh, example we could pull. Or the most reliable, or most representative, perhaps. So, but yeah, I vastly underestimated what this is capable of. I mean, automatically set reserve. Here we go. There we are. Now I can default. That's what I was looking for before. I didn't see it. Now I can default to 1080. Which should help with that overlay. There we go. Now that overlay is going to be nice and readable when I do some recordings. It was right there the whole time. I knew it had to be there somewhere. You ready? You ready, chat? I'm going to do a YouTube outro. So, thanks for watching. Hopefully that was interesting, insightful, informative, or all of the above. Uh, say hi, Twitch chat. 
um, yeah, ongoing videos about Steam, my, my Steam box, Steam, Steam, Steam Deck box thing, ish. My Steam OS gaming rig. If you have any inquiries about what games you would like to see tested on it, uh, well, if I own them, I'll test them. If I don't own them, you gift them to me or something. Fuckers. That was not a way to end the video. That's a bad way to end the video. Thanks for watching. I am Lottie. I'll catch you next time. Thank you as always to the patrons who will be scrolling up above there in the edited version of this. But if you're watching this live, they're not there. You can imagine them. Some of you are patrons in the chat. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. I am Lottie. I'll catch you next time. Smooth, right? Elegant. <laughs>